Well, Jess, Martin, it is so hey, good to be John. with you yeah. for yeah. another week. Yeah. Good Times, New Romans. Absolutely. We're continuing our way through Romans. And Martin, it's especially great to have you back Yeah, here. I was alive back Which then. Is, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what we are going to be doing today is talking yeah. about chapters 13 and 14. Right. Okay. Chapters 1 through 11, we really see this this narrative, this theology, oh, and then brilliant. chapter 12, starting with the therefore. Yeah. And we get yeah. a lot of practical cool. living. Right. And the end of chapter two, or end of chapter 12 ends with, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Correct. And then we get this transition in chapter 13. Yeah. To governing yeah. authorities. Yeah. Martin, why why this transition to talking uh, about governing authorities well, and it, subjecting it to seems them? That it does seem a bit of a break, but I, I think Paul's picking up on, uh, Paul doesn't, Inter inter interrupt his thinking but he suddenly has a thought hang on a minute right. um he's talked about love and he's talked about it but he's been talking in the earlier earlier chapters about law and the law is not it's by faith laws and already there would be a, a feeling amongst new christians that hey we're free um, he's talked about freedom and so i can throw off the shackles I, of I government can, I, yeah Get out of here. And, one of the things that was already getting Christians were getting noticed and mm -hmm. not in a good way, right? Uh, particularly not at this time. And he's saying, Look, you need to be good citizens. Mm -hmm. And he's just, I, I'm, I'm breaking off here because he seems to come back in, um, verse eight, you know, that sort of thing, which, which seems to pick up 12, 9 to 21. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know, I, I think it's just a, a break, uh, to to remind them to be good citizens. But I, I think a caution is to number is to note that number one, he uses the word submit, not obey. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 the Greek word for obey is much stronger. Submit was, look, just let them be in order. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing is he talks about the authorities being God's servants, uh, liter guys, mm -hmm. uh, which is a um, lovely word, but it means that, hey, they're God's servants which is different to the way the emperors thought of themselves as God. Right. Martin, yeah, Martin, I find that helpful, the distinction maybe between submission and obedience. When I think of Israelite history, they have the Israelite midwives disobeying Pharaoh, you yeah. have Daniel disobeying Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Uh, Jessica, why would a Christian disobey? Like, how, how does that work in the midst of this? So the best example I can think of actually comes a little bit earlier in Acts, where like Peter is thrown before oh, the St. Adrian and they're telling him, hey, you got to stop preaching this news about Jesus, yeah. that he's resurrected from the dead. And he looks at them and he says, well, what is better to obey man or to obey God? God absolutely. And so in a lot of senses, we are to obey God as our authority, but yeah. we are to submit to our rulers. And so even as you look throughout scripture, all of the people who decided to disobey for the sake of their faith and honoring the worship of God instead of whoever was in charge, they obeyed what was right for God, but they still submitted to the punishment that came afterwards. That's mm. true. And that is sometimes the hard part. We're like, well, I want to disobey and I don't want to be accountable for my actions afterwards. Uh -huh. The truth is, is like, no, that obedience that we are called to God also requires that you submit to what comes afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fortunately, uh, maybe pay the price. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that was a point that, you know, uh, Kevin was picking up yesterday, mm. uh, powerfully, sorry, Sunday, uh, you know, picking that, that up. Mm. Um, Yes, it's the differentiation between what is good order mm -hmm. and what you should obey in terms of good order and what actually is God's will. Mm -hmm. And I think he allows for that, that uh, I would say, are the, are, are the authorities working in God's perfect and mm -hmm. true will? Mm -hmm. And that takes you back to 12.2. Then you will know what God's perfect mm -hmm. will is. Right. So you need to balance those two things. You're judging what the authority says. And as yet, the only persecution, if we'll use that word, mm -hmm. that's happened so far is actually from the Jewish authority. Right. The Romans are taking no notice at all. I mm -hmm. think you can also see, like, by being good citizens, like, there's that hope that maybe through your good, you're overcoming Correct. evil that exists. That was yeah. kind of the crux of Romans chapter 12 was overcome evil with good. And and by being good citizens, you're heaping those burning coals on their head, hopefully changing behavior. And as we know, eventually the behavior does change the whole empire shifts. But this overcoming evil with good starts with submission, right? Earning that place. Like I think about, I mean, we were teenagers and all the time, some of them maybe did not win the parent lottery, don't have the greatest parents in the world, but are still their like, authority over them. And their submission to their parents, the, the way that they honor and respect them, even though 
they might not be the most honorable is a way that they can then gain hopefully like their parents maybe seeing their faith and the impact it has and hopefully changing their attitude and behavior towards it and so Mm. there's this beauty of when you act respectfully when you submit to authority when you are a good citizen when you pay your taxes when you're honorable that hopefully that does shift culture Mm. people notice absolutely Absolutely. we're doing these things knowing god is the highest authority but there's also then in verse 11 kind of the switch to the mentality as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 11 and do this understanding the present time the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our fal- salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Correct. Well, Martin, what does that mean our salvation is nearer now? Do we not have salvation back then? How does <laughs> yeah. the time Well, he, work? he had a, he understood that salvation is by uh, salvation is through Christ and salvation is uh, <laughs> Uh, Paul understood actually what salvation is, which is actually being saved from our sinful nature and therefore being allowed back in the presence of God. Now, we're back in the presence of God in a sense at the present moment, but not fully. In other words, our salvation is (laughs) not quite yet yet. It's Mm -hmm. finished yet. Mm -hmm. And so he understands that in the hour that is to come, in the Kairos moment, in that time that is to come, um, there's that's when we need to be prepared for that and interestingly he understands that salvation works on mutual opposites they got to be combined we got to be ready the hour is upon us and he really did as did pretty much every christian expect that jesus was returning before their lives would end Mm. anything to add on to that i was going to see like that idea like he's reminding us yeah the night is nearly over you need to put aside these deeds of darkness and i like how verse 13 he has this kind of reminder for us about what are still things that as christians we should not be doing Correct. Mm. which i think then is this reminder as he goes into a new thought in verse 14 talking yeah. about the freedom you have so he kind of like says here are some things that don't think you're free from yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here, let me change yeah. my idea of maybe let's talk about things that there are some disagreements on yeah. in your behavior no, I think that's a great transition it point is. because, yeah, there's things that we ought not to do, yes. verse 13, but then verse 14, rather, mm-hmm. clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Paul's always very good at that. Mm. Look, don't do this. Yes. Do that. Mm. Yeah. He, he's not a, he's not honestly don't, telling you don't all this. He always provides an altar. I want you to, don't do this. I want you to do this. Don't go drinking. I want you to do this. Yes. <laughs> And he has a, a stark contrast there of one is darkness and the other is light. Oh, yeah. Is there any particular significance I, to that, Martin? Yeah, I think we, we're we so used to light, uh, even in our darkness night time, <laughs> yeah. aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. And we are right. overwhelmed with brightness. Mm. Um, whereas <clears throat> in, in the past, and particularly in a place like Rome or any city, there was no li- a light at night, none. Mm. And they were cities were dangerous. Mm. Um, not only from the fact that you could bump into something, uh, you could fall into a, an empty drain, yeah. Yeah, but you're also a, a open to all sorts of, which is why darkness was actually feared so much more as, as a thing in itself. Right. It wasn't just the absence of light. Mm. But darkness was yeah. chaos. Mm. It was the whole thing that everything that was bad happened at night, mm-hmm. happened in the dawn. Mm. It didn't happen during the day. Mm-hmm. So that's why it was a reason yeah. for fear to be feared. So we have this darkness, we have this light. Yeah. But then in chapter 14, all of a sudden there's things that are disputable. Is it dark? Is it light? Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, Jessica, how, do, how does that work, Jessica? Yeah, Tell I us about these disputable matters. What we sometimes forget um, is that this is the beginning of the church, right? And you have sure. these two cultures coming together yeah. that are vastly mm-hmm. different. For the most part, the categories would be Gentiles, your non-Jewish people, and then your Jewish people coming together into one group. And they've been raised fundamentally different. Their beliefs mm-hmm. through the their lives were very Absolutely. different. They have different ideas about what is right and what is yeah. wrong. And suddenly you're saying, hey, coexist together, <laughs> be mm-hmm. harmonious. I mean, you used to look at these people as unclean and dirty heathens. You used to think of them as this way. Now you're supposed to be brothers and sisters. Like what a difficult system to oh. come into. Mm-hmm. And so now there's these Gentiles who are saying, okay, I know I don't have to follow necessarily all these Old Testament dietary laws. I've been free of that my whole life. But then you've got Jewish people coming in and being like, well, for 30 years, I haven't touched mm-hmm. this. And you're telling me now I just in, indulge. Like, how do you overcome that? Yeah. And I imagine they're scoffing like, oh, you that, still that, can't eat pork. Oh, you come still can't eat pork. Christian hey, come, awesome. come and have a, you know, come and have a, a nice deal. Just eat the shrimp. Yeah, eat the, <laughs> eat, the, eat the seafood. 
Um, well, I find it interesting that that one of them, their faith is noted as weak, mm-hmm. yeah. and the other, the faith is noted as strong. Right. When I feel like in the church, often we think of somebody whose faith is strong. Oh, they're doing all these things. Yeah. They're, they're following yeah. all these yeah, rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here, it's actually the ones who aren't following the l- rules that are strong. Yeah. In faith. How does that work, Martin? Uh, I think it's interesting that we've got. <laughs> this is where Paul is being uh, a, a culturally. This is where we we have a, a, an assessment of what we think is strong yeah. and weak. Mm. So, so first of all, I want to address that. What's by the word weak, mm. he meant diluted. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay, now I like my coffee chewable. Okay, so I, <laughs> I like my coffee yeah. to be strong. I, in fact, generally speaking, whatever I like, it, I want it to be strong. I want it to mm. have flavor. So, but when people pour water in, they dilute it and it becomes weaker. Mm. That doesn't yeah. mean to say it stops being coffee. Mm. It just becomes like weaker. That. And what Paul is saying is, if you dilute Christ with something else, right. you make it weaker. And mm. that's how he's using it. He's using it in a theological sense rather than in terms of physical strength or the, mm. what we mean about uh, strong and weak. But another idea, and I, I, I and I've used this many times, and I think it's attributed to Tom Wright, is that when people talk about faith, they talk about it like it's, flour or the sugar that you can weigh mm. and and that's actually not what they mean and, and a better interpretation is faith is like a window mm. it, it, it can be tiny 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 small window or it can be one of these panorama windows it's not the size of the window but the size of god that you see through it okay. it's not your window but what you see the other side of that window mm. that makes the big difference and if you keep looking at the size of your window rather than the God that's on the other side, mm. you are going to constantly keep assessing whether somebody is weak or strong or whatever. God is God. Christ is Christ. I think that's a good point to read verse 6, chapter 14, verse 6. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Correct. Whoever reads meat does so, so to, to the, the Lord. Lord. For they give thanks to God. Absolutely. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord and give thanks to mm-hmm. God. It's all mm-hmm. about who is the object yeah. of your actions. Yeah. 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 I think to Martin's point too, like Paul kind of reiterates and he's like, Well, who are you to judge somebody else's mm. serpent? <laughs> like that's not your position. That's yeah. the master's job. And so very clearly Paul is instructing all of us, don't scoff at somebody else's faith. Sure. Don't scoff at whether they celebrate this or not. Like you are not the master. Exactly. So I don't place a little bit. I don't yeah. scoff at somebody else's wheat coffee. Yeah. <laughs> and I might not enjoy that week, but I'm not gonna yeah, but stopped. there you go. And why do you think Paul would have such a an a significance on the judgment parts? Uh, I don't know. You just I, I think there is we, we 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 sometimes forget that Paul doesn't say anything mm. or write anything or think anything that isn't consistent with the authority of the words of Jesus that mm-hmm. I guarantee you, he knew by heart mm-hmm. as well as the other. He had learned everything that Jesus had said and more that we've got beside. And this reflects the Sermon on the Mount almost, not word for word, but it's alluding to it mm-hmm. all the time. Do not judge, do not pass judgment, of them, do not, uh, do not pay back right. uh, evil for evil. Um, it, it, he's, uh, but this do not judge, do not criticize and Again, people get a, a, a little bit, well, you know, I'm, I'm bound to judge some things. What if something is really wrong? Mm. And what Paul is saying is eating meat or pork was not, it was a matter of disapproval of something that you disagree with. Mm. Right. It's not something that was spiritually wrong or morally Yeah, wrong. it's not like 13 verse 13. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's yeah, not yeah. debauchery. No, 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 exactly. And it's disapproval. It's that kind of disagreement that causes problems. Nobody's going to come to Jesus and uh, say, I, I think Jesus was a magic mushroom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, well, you're not going to find any fakers for that one. Mm-hmm. But if, if, you, if you've got people who disagree with, oh, the way you're handling things, the way you mm-hmm. do things, mm-hmm. then you've got disapproval and it's divisive. Mm-hmm. Right. I do love that Paul says in verse four, like, for the Lord is able to make them stand. So even mm-hmm. though you're passing this judgment that you think their faith is yeah. weak and they're going to fall away, yeah. like Paul very quickly says, hey, don't judge. And if anything, God will make them stand. Absolutely. He mm-hmm. will not let them fall. No, I think no, that's no. such a nice reminder to all it of us is. when we see young Christians or baby Christians and we're like, oh, and that's like, no, actually God is the one who will make them stand. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Can remind Great. Yeah. I, I appreciate just that yeah. you bring up 1313 because it's not, 
an issue of moral relativism. Yeah. It is just this focus on the Lord. And in verse uh, 17, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of but eating and drinking, drinking, but of righteousness, life. peace, and joy. joy in the Holy Spirit. So that's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah, we need to focus on those, be united as much as you can, live at peace as much yeah, as, as, as you're able in, verse, yeah. in chapter 12. So, oh, first, yeah. go ahead, Martin. Yeah, oh, yeah he picks that me. up in 19. Thanks. Therefore, make every effort yeah. to do what leads to peace and mutual edification. In other words, our task as Christians is not to build ourselves up, but, but build each other up. Right. By encouragement. We're, we're, we're there to build each other up. So don't tear each other down. That's build right. each other up. Yeah. I love that, too, because it's like so many eyes were watching these early Christians, too, and yeah. seeing if this like social experiment, so to speak, was going to fail. Exactly. And like Paul's like, hey, don't destroy this beautiful work of God over yeah. food. Like something so silly and trivial. Like people are watching, like see how like your unity, like Jesus says that by your unity, they'll know me. Right. Yeah. So it's like yeah. remembering like this beautiful picture of us coming together, putting aside maybe our thoughts, our personal convictions about the way we should do something in order to preserve. Yeah, unity speaks volumes to the outside does, world. Does. That's that window they're looking in, right? That's the window, yeah. That well, then I think that's a beautiful place to close that. Yeah. As we repeat, yeah, verse 19, let us therefore, in light of all this we just yeah. talked about, make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Absolutely. Team, I feel edified today, and I hope the listeners will feel edified as well. Yeah, absolutely. Great, John. Thank you. you. Lovely, Jess. Good job.